bit bounded in a nutshell, and count myself a king of infinite space, were it not that I have bad dreams. Four centuries have passed since those words were written. We have begun to penetrate infinite space, bounded in our little nutshell spacecraft. But we still have our bad dreams. I can sense them, coming across the midnight of space, and read the cryptic circuitry of their ship, decipher all the codes of fear in the hearts of its crew of three. I wish I could tell them that all will be well, but the future, after all, is not so terrible. But that is not in my nature. They're very near now, the three in the ship. I know each name, each individual pain. Khan, Matlock, Enzo. Three are coming. Only two will leave. The bad dreams will always be with us. And now and again, dreams come true. true, true. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome to Night 4 of Hunttober, the mini-series where I take a look at games that are Halloween-based, horror-based, and eh, just basically games you'd find yourself playing around this time of the year. I give it a look, I give it a quick playthrough, I give my thoughts on it, and if it's something people want to see more of, then maybe it'll become a future series. Tonight, we are taking a look at a game that I actually have no past history with. This is Martian Gothic Unification for the PS1. All I know is it's a survival horror game, it takes place on Mars, and that's about it. So, so we don't have to go through the very long intro again. Let's just jump right into this. Maybe. Possibly. There we go. First things first though, let's take a look. Controls. There's a good action. We got run with circle, kick with square, cancel and shoot. Okay, so it looks like it's a, got like a ready and passive phase. For characters, you can change your characters using select, combat mode, yeah, R1's right there. Inventory is start. I think that's an easy control scheme to deal with. Let's see, display. Subtitles are automatically on, so that makes this game good, in my opinion. Alright, so let's start. Once again, I have no past history with this, so this is a complete blind run through. So if you wanted something that was more uh, just raw thoughts on what the game is like, well, here you got it. 2019. I've just crash landed Zeus 19 within two kilometers of Beta Base. The base directional beacon was out of operation. C can can you also maybe uh, speak up a little bit louder? Fire it's a little hard for some of the people in back to hear you. Lock, Karn, and myself into emergency evacuation. Was my suit glitching out over there for a second? Diane Matlock, Earth Control Bacteriological Division. 9:12 a.m. June 17, 2019. Beginning investigation of continuous radio silence from Mars Beta Base. I attempted to enter airlock 2, but the door was jammed from the inside. My air supply almost ran out before I made it into airlock 3. No sign of the reception committee. No sign of anyone. We obeyed the secondary directive by coming in through separate airlocks. Stay alone. Stay alive. That's what we were told. And that's what we've done. Investigating further In a horror scenario, staying alive usually doesn't lead to you staying alive. Just saying. My mission log. Martin Khan. Earth Control Security Division. 9-12 a.m. June 17, 2019. Prime mission directive to investigate cause of continuous communication silence from Beta Base. I'm now inside Beta Base. It's still silent. And I got a voice that sounds like I gargled some gravel. Began. Kenzo had to pilot the ship in by the seat of his pants. While the dust storm didn't help, we crash landed close to the base. I think Kenzo made it all right into airlock too, but I don't know about Matlock. Haven't heard from either of them since we entered separate airlocks. In the middle of all the panic, we didn't forget the secondary directive. Stay alone, stay alive. Whatever the hell Man, not even they know what that means. I checked the airlock's EVA suit hatches. Plenty of suits. Uh, no air tanks. Uh, no way out. End report. So the fact that it's presenting us these three characters in three separate locations and the option to play as different characters. Oh, we already got gameplay. Yeah. You can swap between the characters, and I'm guessing the actions of one character will influence the actions of another character. 
And it is a tank control game, so that's good to know. Let's see if I remember. Let's see. Uh, let's go to the door, I guess. Open door. Karn told us to make contact before leaving the airlock. All right. I guess don't open the door. Maybe the glowing green panel right here? No. Hmm. Can I put the glitchy suit on, maybe? No. All right, what do we got? We got a watch, a booklet, uh, Satsuma, okay. There's a clock on all of them, so that's interesting. A photo of Kenzo. I'm a long way from Tokyo. Good to know. Uh, we got a booklet. Tips for video games. Totally useless. I don't know. I could use a tip for how I'm getting out of his airlock. All right. What's a Satsuna? It wasn't as fresh as it looked. I think that was a healing item and I just wasted it. Great. Oh, dear. What do we got? Uh, I can't make... I, am I looking at like a computer schematic or am I looking at the map of this place? Silver bullet. My lucky silver bullet. I wonder if there are any Martian werewolves around. <laughs> God, that would be awesome if there was a game about Martian werewolves. That's a personal letter. Alright, all right. I guess he's talking to me then. This thing tells more than the time. Okay, what, what else does it tell? I'm too retro for my own good. Alright, let's see. We got a nicotine patch. After months in space, that's the last one I've got. So we can see that she's an avid smoker, I guess. Maybe that has something to do uh, play into later into the game. One contact lens, lost the other in the crash. I'd be better off without it. I don't know. At least having like one contact lens in you. I'm not someone who wears contacts. I still wear glasses and such. I feel like having at least one good eye, especially in a situation like this, would still be better than having none. A few friends back in London. Huh. They look like a dev team. Oh, what do we got here? Examine the helmet. I talked to the others on the way here. Open the helmet, maybe? Reliable radio, but limited range. Cancel an airlock in decontamp four area. Anyone listening? Karn, are you there? Madlock, are you there? Karn here. Hi there. Okay, now let's find out why beta face has been silent for ten months. Be ready for anything. Madlock, Kenzo, let's get moving, people. Yes, boss. Okay, Karn. He sounds incredibly bored talking, by the way. I don't know. Being inside an abandoned facility and that lost contact for 10 months straight, I feel like I would have a bit more urgency than just, I just woke up and I'm now doing my first take. So I wonder, do they also play while you play as one character? Nope, she's still inside her airlock as well, and I'm guessing he is as well. So let's just go back to Karn. Or no, wait, this isn't Karn, this is the other guy. Honestly, I figured that one of the gimmicks they were going to do at the start to test out your puzzle solving skills was you, you could use the radio when you had one character, but to have it uh, progress, you'd have to get the radio for all of them. Because there was a spacesuit for each of the other airlocks. Is anyone around? Anyone alive? Or dead? If you're dead, don't answer. Hmm, that was weird. 
I was like, I thought that it was preluding to something with the camera change for a second. All right, we're going to bust it open with a radio. Nope. Rainbow tag required. Okay, so we need a tag to get in there. All right, makes sense. Oh, God. I thought it was just a run, but no, it just turns this slow walk into a brisk jaw. Hi. Uh, if anyone here was alive, would they have left the corpse lying in a corridor? I don't know. I mean, maybe... Possibly? I don't know. I don't know the laws of Martian, uh, stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. Just search the dead body. He's dead. It's not like he needs anything. Alright, guess I'll just move on. I sure hope nothing happens to that body while my back is turned. I think I took the wrong door. I can hear him speak in my mind. So, we've got reanimation, telepathy, and levitation. Now I call that downright supernatural. An alien haunting. Are you on something, Kenzo? Okay, this is Kenzo. So, this is like a, I'm gonna guess a sequel to Ghost of Mars that everyone, or I should say no one asked for? Hello? Ah! No. I wonder, did that actually hurt me? No, it did not. He just mildly inconvenienced me. Okay. Uh, let's open the door, I guess. Of course. Hmm. Well, all my years of studying with ghosts, maybe if I use the radio? Reliable radio, but limited range. All right. Well, guess not. Uh, throw the book at him. Tips for video games. Totally useless. Alright, let's go. Uh, I guess there's nothing else to do in here right now. You know, for a second, I got thrown off because I, this looked like the hallway that the body was in, but no, it's back there. Because I thought, oh, did something actually move the body? Is there anything that doesn't require a tag? Ooh, what do we got here? Uh, Broadway hatch. Okay. Ooh, health boost. I'm gonna guess that doesn't actually boost my health, it's just a healing item. So I'll hold on to that until something bad happens. Looks like the lock mechanism has been heat fused. Alright, well, guess I can't do anything with that door then. Probably need like a cutting tool or something for it. I don't know what you expect me to do. I mean, it's just a dead body. Hmm. So much quiet eeriness. It feels like it's building up to something. What it's building up to, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't like it either way. Uh, of course it does. All right, if we're on a door with a green tag. Uh, let's see. Yep, I have no idea how to read that. Okay, there's the one that said a rainbow tag. There's another rainbow tag right there. Uh, I want to say that I'm on Sunset Boulevard. I can't really see anything that said airlock on there, so it's hard to get like a reference of to all the locations on that map. Well, this is ominous. 
The bulkhead's sealed. If one's sealed, they'll all be sealed. The only way to raise them is through the main computer. Alright, well, I guess there's nothing else we can do with him then. So, let's go to Madlock. Uh, real quick, I want to just check and see if there's anything. Open the helmet. Okay, so no, they actually all grabbed the radios. How about the EVA suit? EVA suit without air in the tank. Useless. All right, so I'm guessing maybe the fact that the EVA suits don't have air tanks, that's something we're going to need to know for a later reference. All right, I gotta admit, for a horror game that has three playable characters inside it, having like uh, one character's actions influence the other ones and you have different areas to explore with them, that's pretty cool. Voice acting could use a little bit more energy to them, but eh, whatever. All right, uh, let's see. Does she have a different map? No, it's the same map for everyone. Okay. All right, so I think I got it now. The 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 circles with the arrows inside them, those are airlocks. So I'm going to guess she's located by hmm, either Times Square or... Uh, whatever that middle one is, it's hard to tell. All right, well, in that case, uh, let's swap to, not you, you. See if his uh, door is malfunctioning as well. This is a different airlock door than the rest of them. Personally, I like to breathe oxygen. That's because that's the airlock to the Martian surface. Okay. This is the right way to go. Alright, can we get through this door or is this one also broken? Door malfunction. Computer override required. Alright, so we can only use the first guy. Hey, the decontam door is malfunctioning. Can't get into the goddamn base. The decontam doors should have a general bypass on the computer. I'll try and get you out. Alright, well, in that case. Might as well go back to him. Since he's the only one on the inside. Corridor after corridor. Not a living soul. Shadows and echoes. This is a haunted house on Mars. Like I said, dialogue could use a little work. But it still seems like a pretty serviceable horror game. Uh, any, meeny, miny, this one. I'm guessing it needs like a yellow tag required. The bulk oh, bulkhead sealed. sealed. Never mind. Once sealed, they'll all be sealed. The only way to raise them is through the main computer. All right, let's try this door then. Green tag required. Examine the vacuum tube. A low tech vacuum tube. Ooh, what do we got here? Uh, no from Ben Gunn. Park Lane is written in capitals. Could be a password. I'm in the mood, Park Lane. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the map then. Hmm. All right, so Park Lane is... All the way down there by the purple door. That might be where I first came in from, so let's head back down there then.
This is too creepy and too quiet. It's, something's going to happen. I just know it. When it's going to happen, that I don't know. Like, the creepiest thing that we've found so far is a floating body that will just nudge me out of the way if I get too close to him. He's like, dude, stop it. Personal space, man. Alright, that door is sealed. So I guess we just head back down this way. That's the medkit station, so don't need to grab anything from there. So I wonder, is this something then? Usually when I see a glowing green light, that means that it's something of value. I think that's just a background light. The only thing to interact with there is the door. Everything just needs a green tag, it seems. All right, let's go this way then. The base members nicknamed the quarters after famous streets. I think this is Madison Avenue. Okay, so we're on Madison Avenue then. All right, now that I got a frame of reference. Uh, Madison Avenue, Madison Avenue. There it is. Okay, now I see it. So now we know where we are. We can go down to the right, and there's two doors we can go into there. One of which I hope is the computer room. Never mind then. If one, sealed, they'll all be if sealed. one is sealed, they'll all be the sealed. Way to raise them is through the main computer. That'd be nice if they told me where the main computer was located. Is this also a bulkhead sealed? The yep. Bulkhead sealed. If one sealed, they'll all right. Well, in that case, where can I find the main computer then? Oops. Nope. Still need to play as him. All right, uh, let's see. So those two bulkheads are sealed then. And there's a ghost up there. Hmm. All right, so that door is sealed, and that is the green door with a number two in there. And I'm guessing maybe that, since I see like a two and a two on those by in between that rainbow door, that means that's probably like a quick uh, travel station, or fast travel, I should say. Why did I say quick travel? I'm an idiot. Hello, Mr. Ghost. Don't mind me. Just exploring. Alright, well, he's got a door we can go into back there. Unfortunately, I can't really do anything about it getting around him. Maybe because he's floating there and I see a ventilation hatch, maybe it, that, like, dotted line that goes around behind him, maybe that's how I need to get in there, so I need to find a rainbow tag. Alright, uh, that's the yellow door, so we can't do anything there. Uh, let's see, State Street, and then Sunset Boulevard, Park Lane, Times Square. I can't really tell where, where the computer would be located, though. I guess, if anything, we just go back into here and hope for the best. Alright, sorry I'm bringing up the map so much, it's just I need to figure out what doors are what. So, that's a door we just can't get through because it's sealed, or it's jammed. So we go down there, and we just try to go straight, and let's see how far that takes us. Uh, 
Not very far, it seems. All right, green tag, that would mean that it, uh, where are we then? Green tag indicates that, I'm guessing it's the green tag that's in the center of State Street. So we just need to keep going down then. I figured searching the dead bodies here would give me tags to open up to some of these doors, but it doesn't seem to be the case. That's a sealed bulkhead, so we can't go through there. That requires a... Nope. Green tag. Now, wait a second. Where's this one located, then? Unless that's the U shape, then I can't really figure it out then. Hmm. Unless a, a tag is located randomly on one of these dead bodies, I have no clue what I'm doing. I thought something was happening. I don't know why he just randomly stopped right there. Oh, hey, there's one. All right, what do we got? A key marked M E D. Med. All right, so it doesn't really showcase it, but I need to search every dead body on the ground then, so because they actually do carry items. I guess the shrugging thing was just like, oh, I couldn't find anything on them. Looks like the lock mechanism has been heat fused. Hmm. What if I used a key? Nope. All right. Well, it seems I'm going to need some kind of cutting tool to get through that door, then. Uh, let's see. What was this thing again? Broadway hatch. Alright, well, in that case, let's just head back out here and search these bodies. One has to have a tag somewhere. Says Felici on his name badge. Hello, what do we got here? Micro recorder and an orange tag. Okay, now we're making progress. Alright, orange door was located past... Oh, right before the ghost. Okay, now we got it. Oh, and also the micro recorder. Probably should listen to that. Standard issue micro recorder. Probably for personal use only. Oops. Antonio Felici, base director, day log, August 8th, 2018. 11.56 p.m. I was walking down Broadway when I first heard them coming. There's a dead man hovering in front of me. I just walk up by. I can still hear gunfire. Earth Control should never have shipped those weapons in. If anyone gets to hear this, tell Alan B. I resigned. I handed the master key over to Judith. The crew trusts her more than me. They think I'm in Alan B.'s pocket. Well, I guess I used to be. Yuri broadcast a message a few moments before system closed down. He said, stay alone, stay alive. Sure, but stay alive how long? An hour at most? The end will come soon. Main bulkheads are sealed. Shuttle bay area are obstructed. No way out. I'm heading back to my own room. Lock myself in. Sooner or later they'll come for me. 
and that'll be the finish. If anyone hears this, tell my wife I kept the faith. She'll know what that means. Some things are personal. Well, I guess that stay alone, stay alive thing didn't work out too well for him. Oops, nope. I just need to make sure I'm going the right way. I think I am. I just need to go straight. Yep, spooky red room. Okay, so tags open doors. This is a new discovery I've just found. I'm also not totally bored out of my mind with the situation I'm in right now. Alright, well, we got the micro recorder, so let's use that. Antonio Felici. Aha! Alright, let's see what we got. Maybe we can figure out what this whole, whole mess is. Recorded by Judith Haraway, emergency transmission. Now it all makes sense. Oh god, that's a lot of reading. On August 6, 1996, uh, proof of ancient Martian life was announced by NASA as the world to the world media based on the identification of microfossils in a Martian meteorite. Within a few months of the announcement, President President Clinton made the public uh, com commitment to search for extraterrestrial life on Mars. Fifty million years ago, an asteroid on impact on Earth blasted an area of the Martian surface into the space. One of the rocks from the eject from this ejected coming from the wayward orbit, which ended up in Antarctica in 11,000 BC. This meteorite weighed 4.2 pounds, and the materials were, were formed 4.5 uh, billion years ago on Mars. When the rock was for, uh, first condensing on Earth, it was discovered in 1984 and labeled Rock ALH84001. From the beginning of, the, of NASA's claim was a scourge of condemnation and also organ playing in scientific circles but dismissing voices were gra uh, gradually silenced as later investigations proved conclusively that fossil bacteria of alien or origin were indeed present on in ALH all right the core divided one base in the present form was can Completed in the 17th of October 2015, crewed by six men and four women, this mission was summed up in its name, Vita Life. Vita One was intended above all as a research base for ex extinct Martian life. From its completion in October 2015 to the present time of August 2018, President Allenby has ordered all resources of this multi-international company, Earth Control, to be placed in the disposal of the Vita Project. It of which Vita 1 base is the first stepping stone. A second Vita base has been completed in the Hellas plane, awaiting its first crew and others as planned. The Vita project is instructed by President Allenby in 2015, or 2005, sorry, to search for physical evidence of extraterrestrial life. Mars is the first step in this long-term project, 
Geared to the discovery and analysis of living Martian microorganisms, the enormous funds available in Earth control allowed the grace of space exploration to accelerate, or the pace of spe space exploration. Sorry if my reading is a little bad. The TV I'm actually using makes it a little fuzzy. You might not see it on the, the recording itself. Uh, let's see. Outstripping even the Apollo missions of 1960s. The mood. The most sophisticated in all InfoMesh systems is the Z, or the YX009 series, and the series Mood is considered the most fully conscious and uh, enatric. Oh, let's see. Uh, mood is considered. Uh, yeah. The information, InfoMesh user of the Mood is Andrew, uh, so born in stress. Okay, so it's just more lore stuff. Okay, so I can't get in there. Door controls. There we go. Override? Yes. Now we can finally get the other crew members in. You're out of the box now, Karn. The Decontamp 3 door won't respond. We'll have to find a way to unlock Decontamp 3. Alright, well, I want to go back and read more of this computer. Uh, let's see. Martian Mayhem. The worst video game in the solar system. Oh god. Is this a mini game? Accessing memory card, don't remove memory card. It's just a built-in mini game, isn't it? Oh, play game. An awful kind of uh, catastrophe has occupied at Oof. When the outer monster gets here, we're gonna be in deep shoe polish. Listen, Rock Harding, as a 19-year-old modern independent woman who is top-notch government scientist and karate expert, I strongly object to your gender stereotyping, which has no place in the second decade of the Okay, so it's intentionally cheesy like this. Let me blast at that outer monster Oh, is it like a text adventure? Eat earth for that Martian dirt ball. Suck on this, Martian thumb. Yep, it's intentional. Suck on this, Martian thumb sucker. Eat earth bullet, Martian dirt ball. Okay, well, that was pointless. Uh, sorry about the game. I'll just leave. Bye. Ah! Get off me, get off me! Well, that's, that happened. Uh, let's swap characters. Let's swap to him now since he can finally get inside. Khan here. Can anyone hear me? I can hear There's you. Waiting for us in this base. I can feel it. Something in the scent of the air, and a special kind of silence. Right, there was something over here. I want to see what this leads to. Bolt lock seven seven nine locking mechanism. Looks like the lock's been deliberately jammed from the inside. All right, Kim, go in there then. Nothing on him. What the hell stopped my watch? 48, 64? Uh, 64 minutes past 48 o'clock? Gotta be kidding. 48, 64. I wonder. Let's go back to him real quick. This is going to be a real dangerous thing, but if I go back in here, maybe 4864 is a password to use on the computer.
for... Oh god, there's even letters? Aha! Martin Kane, age 31, height 6'2", uh, nationality American, profession, security operations officer. Psychological profile, ex-military, Martin Kane is a disciplined individual. He possesses highly intuitive mind with a flexible response to demanding situations. When he w faced with a problem, he's like a dog and a bone. He just won't let go. He's a natural leader, even when others don't want to be led, although much of his game, uh, his gun hose style is definitely tongue-in-cheek. His personal courage is remarkable. On the darker side, he tends to hide an unhappy, guilty personality under a thick v veneer of cynicism and indifference. Hmm. Oh, wait. 3174, 3172, and 2019, okay. 31. 72. Yep. That's what the watch things are for. Kenzo Uji, age 25, height 5'11", uh, nationality Japanese, profession, info mesh, and general computer systems analysis and designer. Psychological profile. In some ways, typical to the latest breed of techno hippies, Kenzo is a remote, introspective personality with an offbeat style. He is solitary by nature, but when a occasion demands, he will force himself to be moderately sociable. Like all info meshers, he is liable to become dissoluted from reality. His intent intellect is formidable, characterized by lateral thinking and flashes of pure genius. Kenzo's psychically Psychic talents are second to none. His fail his failing is that he may become too self-absorbed, especially following periods of info meshing. So I guess that explains why the ghost was able to talk to him in his mind then, because he's a psychic. And twenty nine fifteen. Twenty nine fifteen. Dave Matlock, age twenty six, five ten, British and microbiologist. Dave Matlock is a cultured, well balanced personality with a somewhat expensive, mature uh, nature. Her intellect is seen is keen, and her moral and physical courage is considerable. When placed in severe stress and life-threatening situations, she tends to resort to joking, casual attitude, always masking any fear. She has a healthy disregard for the more pompous forms of authority and an ability to function in several conditions. A die-hard Democrat, she likes any uh, she di dislikes any reference to her associated birth, for which she comp uh, compensates by criticizing all types of inherited privilege. She has had several lovers, more uh, none serious, and treat life as an adventure to be savored. This director's girlfriend, perhaps? Oh, what do you have? You've got... Uh, ammo for a piccolo. Okay. Thanks, I guess? Hello, tech vacuum tube. And nothing there. So I'm guessing the vacuum tube... Oh, she's awake. Uh, thanks for the ammo. So I guess the vacuum tube is a way to transfer items between characters. Or in some cases that you can just find some notes inside them. Alright, he's got nothing. This way, I believe, is one of the bulkheads that was sealed up. Oops, nope, wrong one. Yeah, we need a green tag for that.
This guy's got three bullets in him. What happened here? Group hysteria? All right, nothing here. I figured that the fact that you're able to examine bodies means they have something of interest on them. That would have been like a decent tell for it. By the decomposition of the bodies, they probably died around the time of the last transmission to Earth. Weird thing is, they're like human freezers. I can feel the cold coming right out of them. And nothing inside them. All right. Ooh, what do you got? Storage hatch. Oh, damn, it's past coded. All right, never mind then. And let me guess, that door needs a special tag, doesn't it? Purple tag required. Yep. All right, uh, purple tag. That means that I'm located right down there at Park Lane. Okay. So the way I need to go is this way, seeing as how there was a doorway I could go into. And I can't... Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Vacuum tube. Okay. I was going to guess that maybe I could swap to locations if I put stuff in the vacuum tube. Six four? Nope. Hmm. Okay, so maybe I need to go back into the computer area and maybe there was something on the computer that could give me an idea of how to open that door. Which means I gotta deal with the zombie again. And did she actually hurt me? I think she did. Yeah, it nommed a little bit off me. I'm sorry, lady, but you're already taken by your zombie boyfriend. Now, excuse me while I do some work on the computer. All right. Not the files on us, according to the emergency transmission. Oh, no, wait. That was the transmission we heard. Storage locations. Let's see. Vacuum tube. Oh, okay. So uh, that actually tells you what's inside the vacuum tubes there. All right, so Martian Rock is inside the chem lab. The white tag is inside the bio lab. Park Lane has a green tag, a health boost, and antitoxin. That's down where the other dude is. Storage hash has flare bolts. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff in there. Storage room monkey, hacksaw, piccolo ammo. That's a that's a lot of vacuum tubes I see at the bottom. All right, uh, let's see. Unrestricted. Hmm. Nothing there. Two thousand five. That might be useful for a passcode, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Info mesh. Uh, not seeing anything there. That's too big of a thing for the, any of the passcodes. Uh, not seeing anything there. Uh, chronologically, 1974. Let's see. Uh, 1976. Viking 1, Viking 2. 1996, 1996, 1984, 1996, 2005, 2009, 2010, 2015, 2018. Hmm, not seeing anything for this stuff. Now, get off me! I'm not interested! Please tell me. Ah, get off me! Get off! 
Huh, there we go. It seems like the best case scenario is if they do attack you, attack. Uh, make sure they attack you from behind. Because at least that, I guess, knocks them out for a while. However, I'm down to half health. I'll just use that to heal back up a bit. Alright, so he's still floating there. Oops, nope, wrong one. I want to go back to him real quick. Because it said there was a vacuum tube around here that had some stuff inside it. Nope, alright. That's the sealed door. Okay. And that's a sealed bulkhead, so I can't go into there. The bulkhead sealed. Automatic security procedure during biohazard alert. Yep. All right. Well, we are almost up to an hour now. I wanted to do a little bit longer for this game because I knew this type of game was going to be... What the hell is going on with that door? I wanted to do a little bit longer with this kind of game because I felt like these, like, Resident Evil-like games were a slow burn, and it's understandable. So, I guess, since we're pretty much coming up to time, I might as well give my thoughts on this. Eh, it seems like a pretty decent uh, survival horror game. It's unique in its style, and it's not like a very bland-looking game. I, I actually do like the design of some of the rooms here. Uh... I like give this game the spooky skeletal thumbs up of approval. I definitely will check out this game some more t in the future because it really does pique my interest a bit. I might change my opinion later on in the game because it might either get really stupid or really BS, but who knows. As of right now, my opinion stands that this seems like a pretty alright game to take a look at. So if you find it for yourself, then uh, I'd say maybe pick it up. But with that, that's where we're going to end today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more of this, then please leave it down in the comments. If you have an idea for what you'd like to see as a future series or a game you'd like me to take a look at in a future Huntoper, please also feel free to leave that down in the comments. I will see you all next time for whatever's coming up. All right. See you, everybody.